I think three. Did you say how many songs first? I think like three, because they okay. usually do like- Janessa, where's your charger? Yeah, it's low. Forever and ever. How many songs first? I think three. I think like three because they okay. usually do like. Janessa, where's your charger? Okay. okay. It started on there. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you for taking the time out to come and see Portland artist for Teresa Rayford. As you know, Teresa Rayford is running for mayor. And we just have a few days left for, uh, for you to turn in your ballot. You can drop off your ballot by May 19th at many of the different drop off places and by May 14th if you want to get it in the mail. Yeah, and so and we're um, so excited to have with us tonight Blossom, uh, who probably many of you already know. Uh, she is uh, a beautiful, beautiful singer that has already released two albums and uh, she grew up here in Portland. And uh, if you ever get a chance to see her live, it's just a magical evening. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I haven't seen you live in a while. Uh, I know I can't even recall right now the last time that I, I got to perform live. Yeah. And then, um, as many of you know, Teresa has been a tireless advocate for everyone in the community for the past 10 years. She started Don't Shoot Portland. She is uh, very consistent in her uh, demand for accountability from our elected leaders and um, for exposing so many of the roots of all these problems that we see within our city and making sure that she identifies resources to help solve a lot of those problems at the root. So we're so lucky. We would be so lucky to have you as our mayor. And so we need to work really hard to make sure that that happens. Absolutely. And I'm thankful to be here with community support to get us there. Um, right now, we're only at 19.4% of the ballots turned in. And I know how many people I know. I know how many people I've directly influenced. And I know that right now that Ted has lost the public's trust. And if we don't want to have another four years of him, um, we need to get rid of him. We need to give him a message. And I'm hoping that everybody with a postage uh, paid ballot, which that's everybody in Portland who's eligible and registered to vote has, um, use it, you know, mail that mug in, get them in there. Um, you have until the 14th to actually mail them. And then after that, you get to, you know, basically go and drop them off at the ballot. I mean, at the uh, at the elections office or any one of the, the locations that are still going to be open um, in this COVID time. And you can find that information at Multnomah County Elections website. Also, they're going to be opening up two locations for the um, people that want to vote in person. And they're gonna also be uh, showing some social distancing in those spaces. And one of them is at the elections office, but also at Holocene, <laughs> where they're gonna be setting it up with voters booths. And I was like, wow, that's mad insane considering we're doing this whole music series. And most of the artists that I know connected um, to different projects that I wanted to be a part of and was a part of that took place at Holocene. So, it's just funny that on Malcolm X's birthday, we can go take Holocene and then take the city of Portland if we choose to. And we, <laughs> and we choose to. Hey. <laughs> choose to. <laughs> so thank you. I'm just so honored to have you here. And I'm thankful Anna is putting this work together um, to get everybody engaged in this campaign because it's very important. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, thank you for having me. So, yeah. so wish I could hug you both. Adore you both. Same, same. Um, well, and on that note, we have to make sure that everyone who's watching and everyone who votes for you goes out and tells their friends and family and neighbors to vote for you because probably so many people don't even, you know, so many people don't even look at their ballot and some people don't even know that you're running. So we have to make sure everyone knows so that they get excited about voting for you for mayor. Oh, absolutely. I know that um, in prior elections, people would talk to me later, like a year later and say, hey, are you still running for office? I can't wait to get my ballot and not be like, well, that was like 2014, you know, like <laughs> it was so long ago, but. Um, you've been working, wow. you've been working out yeah. here. How yeah. long have I known you, Tressa? You've been consistent. 
I know. And I'm not going to stop. Like I'm, I'm literally doing this so that we have a blueprint that's part of our, our community that mm -hmm. anybody can grab it and utilize it to dismantle everything that is, you know, like anti-liberation. Like we need to be liberated people in these spaces mm -hmm. and we need to fight for that. And when it comes to policy, we have to identify which policies are harming us in order for anybody to get it right. But right now they don't have a desire to engage us. So we're coming in we're going to go in and, you know, we're going to handle our business, take care of our community. Right. It's a very large, necessary scale. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, without further ado, Blossom, we'd love to have you per perform. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, before I like prop you and you don't see, this is Charlie over here playing the keys. He's amazing. Um, we're going to sing a song that we wrote together. Um, and I'm going to switch it on you give me the, if you can hear. Okay. I also, um, okay. Want you to know that, um, there's a chat within zoom. Okay. All right, everyone, enjoy. Nice. Oh, this is crazy. Can you hear me? Uh huh. I can hear you, but it should be louder, a little bit louder. How am I now? Louder? Mm -hmm. Might need to do it without the mic. Check Havana. Woo! Okay. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna bring up Danielle, Danny Danger. She's gonna sing a little a little prayer for you. A little prayer for you. By the way, this is my wonderfully talented musician friend confidant Danny Danger. She is amazing. If you have not heard of her, you will. Hello, good evening.
from there to church. That's where we go. We go to church. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay, let's do, um, let's do the new one. The very new one. The very, very new one. Um, we got, uh, how is it going to go? Hoping you notice 
open your focus and tell me what's real in your head. But you've been holding me right here instead. And I just know if I can get in your head. Tell me what's in your head. Hoping to get in. You've been holding me here. Knowing I can. Tell me what's all in your head. You've been holding me here. Just know if I can get in your head. Tell me what's all in your head. Hoping to get in. You've been holding me here. Knowing I can't. Tell me what's all in your head. You've been holding me here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you again for now. Is that going to take? Say a little prayer for me. Oh my God. <laughs> no, that was amazing. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. Oh, wow, okay. when the quarantine is over, we are going to be so lucky to have you guys out in the world. <laughs> we can't wait. You guys, like, please, get, please give it up. Please give it up. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Like, Danny, uh-uh, bring it. <laughs> Annie, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Y'all just did the whole thing. What is that? The mini desk concert? We on NPR right now. Tiny desk. Oh my God. Wow. I can't wait for the inauguration. Oh yeah. Okay. We will be in there. Like yes. This. Yes. 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 The Morgan <laughs> City Hall sounds beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness. When you played the um, Say a Little Prep for You, that song. Yes, that love that song. Okay, so look, I used to be in the music industry. And so one of my friends is a producer for the RZA, right? So when he started his Bobby Digital thing, um, like my guy Tony um, does beats. And so he made this beat for me off of that song. I said, make me an original one, like a cover so I can use it for my promotion. So oh, when I okay. ran for office, I used a different, uh, a track that he put together for me based on that same song. So when I heard it, I was like, whoa, <laughs> I saw the video online the other day. It was funny. I was like, wow, that's the, <laughs> well, I'll have to, I'll have to hear it. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna find the track and stick it in the chat. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. This the video is on YouTube. It's funny, but it has the song on there and it was never taken off because it was made for me. But when I heard you singing that, I was like, wow, y'all bad. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so for all of our viewers that are just joining in, I uh, want to remind you that this is your opportunity to get to know Teresa and learn about her platform. So there's a online chat, you have to log into YouTube, but use that online chat and send in your questions so we can ask Teresa. She's got such so much to talk about. Uh, so yeah, ask what you want. And um, also, uh, just as a reminder to get those ballots in, uh, you have to put them in the mail by May 14th or drop them off at the different locations by May 19th. So uh, submit your questions, but before um, we do that, Blossom and um, Danny, is there anything that you guys wanna ask Tress? I know one of her things is she wants to know a lot about what's important to you, but uh, and I'm sure you're curious. I, I mean, yeah, we started when we started the campaign. One of the things that I asked special to do was to set up a, a format where we could connect with people and ask them what was important to them. And I think I put like probably 20 different answers on the form, but we got to use it like over the last year and a half. We got to use it like in our coffee meetups and the library meetups, just canvassing and then also collecting information on the website. And um, it's, it's just incredible to hear so many different people who have probably never even been asked um, about what's important to them in the city outside of a place where somebody's promoting their own, you know, agenda or their own movement, you know, just asking just relativity, like, what's important to you? No agenda, no thought process, just you yourself, you know, um, no propaganda atmosphere, no rally. Um, just your general life in Portland, like, you know, I'm, that's important to me because all of us, there's things that always happen that, you know, scream crisis and, you know, expand our opportunity to show up. But in everyday life, there's a lot of things that people don't get to see. And there's a lot of reason behind that, that we don't always show up. But what can the city do better? You know, yeah. what should we be doing better? Yeah. I love that. Those are... I think those are really good questions and you probably get a lot depending on the different areas that you are asking um, and people that you're asking. I know that for a lot of people that are from Portland and moved to Portland a long time ago or making Portland their home are just wanting to know how people that are in charge are going to make maintain their 
livelihood in Portland and they're not going to be sent out of Portland or yeah. sent out of their communities or, or um, how we're going to preserve the things that are important or make Portland, Portland, whether it's in the school districts, um, you know, the arts, all those things. Um, I don't think that any, at least like creatives or people that haven't been following politics know an ease of access to one, take partake and um, um, be able to like use their voice for that. And also where to find resources um, for the like many different stages of life that Portlanders have. Um, you know, we are a huge, uh, we, our creative scene is bigger than the working scene in some, in, you know, the nine to five scene in some places. And um, I know that we tend to feel like we were um, not really included in a lot of the things that are being done besides to entertain. Exactly. Um, and our live, you know, the things that we need to take care of ourselves um, and the resources that we need to take care of ourselves and educate our crowd of people aren't necessarily there. Um, and like blending the two don't typically happen often enough for us, I think. And you're right. Um, when I grew up in Portland, there were a lot of musicians, there were a lot of artists that actually made a living educating, building their business, um, being like the development agency for different products and services, whether they were writing the songs or creating the art um, for the products or whatever, but everybody literally united around small business and a skill set of innovation and creativity, right? And like how I said, I called my homeboy who made beats and asked him to make me a track for a video for my campaign. Like, right. that was the usual and customary. I didn't know you had to go through a certain agency to find the music that's been vetted and that the people had a market research and that's the, you know, the tone that people want to hear. But again, that's a patriarchy system, a, a system of bureaucracy. And when systems like that are created and they don't involve access for everyone, let's say that we do use artists just for entertainment purposes, mm -hmm. but we know the, the, the power of art. We know the strength of art, like the museum gets millions of dollars just to preserve art. Right. So why is a living artist still a starving artist? Right. Um, why is a city so dependent on that artist? And But we're only giving out small grants and then there's still oversight and gatekeeping in regards to who gets what money and how that money is utilized rather than you just being free and feeling comfortable in your soul and creating things that are necessary for us to have access to. Right. Mm -hmm. Which there is no value on that. I used to do accounting for artists before I moved to Portland. And that's what, another reason why I'm always so an intent on saying that you can't control art because that's literally the basis for my organizing. And there has not been a commitment from any institutions to invest in that, even though they do consider it an education tool and they've all benefited from it. And that's the story of your life as an artist, but that's why we have to be creative when we, when we use our art, like not to be exploited. And a lot of that has to do with not having to depend on the same systems that harm us um, to keep us, right? And if someone's harming you, but you don't have any other opportunities, you're more likely to continue to depend on it. But when you have the power to change that system and it's gonna require your direct engagement in order to apply policy to it that uh, creates a better opportunity for you, if the only thing you have to do is be engaged and elect the leaders that you need, then that's what democracy is supposed to be anyway. And that's what we're participating in right now. So you haven't lost anything. You're young, like you're doing right. it right now with your life. Can you imagine where you're going to be later on? Like you're literally somebody that I've known and counted on in order to communicate um, political um, action to people, um, human rights and social justice issues to communities. Mm -hmm. um, you have to learn how to be um, entrusted with that power and people need to be called accountable to investing in you. Totally. Yeah. Um, I came home and I seen like in our gentrified neighborhood <laughs> in North and Northeast Portland, I saw like arts community housing and stuff. But I also remember my uncle who was a veteran used to live in some of that housing. And I was like, well, where are they at now? Right. And, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I saw the displacement. I even saw that when they tried to start centering um, our communities in the leadership of some of these art institutions, how their donors, the people with the money, um, pulled back funding. And so they started closing as well. And so when we talk about institutional racism and what you won't do with your money and what you won't invest in, in your with your money, 
um, that's a solid reason again for us to stand against being exploited because we know who the systems are that we're working with. We know what they rely on. Right. And it's not the opportunity to invest in us. Uh, we have to find those opportunities, but we need leaders that don't mind providing them. Um, when I used to be in the industry, my thing was teaching people how to set up their own publishing and how to go ahead and set up their accounting and get attorneys to help protect their arts so that they could manufacture it and distribute it and make money off of the publishing rights and everything else and be protected. That's the type of mindset that I'm bringing into our city right now, because on the record, they're saying that we've been disenfranchised, right? And as artists, we know that that is what they always say when they say that there's a grant or some type of foundation to help stabilize that, but we have to make it happen. Right. Like it's not just gonna happen. I don't believe in good intentions. There's money I won't even apply from, from certain organizations that are in this city because I know that they exploit people like us. And I don't That's want right. to record that they've given us anything as far as my organization is concerned. Mm -hmm. And even when I found myself in uh, situations with those agencies, I had to go back to the agencies that I had partnered with and said, hey, you need to be full disclosure with me because I choose who appropriates my imaging, my branding and my products, you know? And mm -hmm. so that needs to be taught. That needs to be part of what we're talking about when we say know your rights. Um, that needs to be part of what we talk about when we say we want to promote civic participation and engagement. It can't just be when there's some funding to do something and we need all of the creatives to come to the table. Mm -hmm. Creatives should always be at the table, yeah. period. Mm -hmm. If we ever want to build inclusivity and equity in this city, then we have to change the paradigm of white supremacy. And that is the guiding force of how we communicate. But the only way that's going to change is if we, uh, what do we call that? Uh, dang intervene <laughs> bystander intervention mm -hmm. part. so i love that yeah we're doing um reconstruction that's why we rock with you teresa look that's why we on the boat we got to do it i mean the concern is that people will think that we're going to go in there and we have to learn how to work within that system and we don't we have to teach that system how to unlearn how it works right we have to be clear in our processes of dismantling it and the partners that we bring in to do that and a lot of people know that i'm already committed to justice so who else am i going to come in there and partner with i'm coming in to partner with the auditor who's having issues with watchdog money um, I'm coming in there to, you know, work with different attorneys that can help make sure that the way that we're contracting in the city is fair and equitable, you know. Um, we need better to do better, but we can't just put a Band-Aid on something that's broken. And this city is broken. Hasn't right. worked well in a while. Yeah. And, and I think that with your platform, it's a more of a free... Um, you feel comfortable to like come and ask the questions um, because like I know for myself, I haven't been this involved with wanting to know what's going on until I was approached with um, a candidate or people that I felt like I could ask any of those questions to um, being able to be like approachable and um, being able to say, I might not be able to answer this, but here's somebody that can answer it um, is, huge and it seems very simple when the you're working for the people why can't the people get a hold of you why can't we talk to you that stuff needs to be mm -hmm. cut out it needs to they be forgot that there. they work for us they've forgotten mm -hmm. that they work for us yeah totally yeah. I wanted to say that I've had parents, I've had people who have lost their children that didn't know they could go and talk to the mayor. I've had children's parents who have been fighting our education system that didn't know they could speak to their state senators that sit on education committees. I've taken people to the state capitol to literally testify in front of people in judiciary committees and make policy change. Right. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't even know that the process could include us because right. the way that we're educated, people tell us like, show up at the thing, put on the shirt, come sh see the show, come eat the food. And then you leave and that was your participation, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to unlearn that, but we have to have leaders that are courageous enough and wanna be accountable um, to, mm -hmm. to, you know, pushing out that olive branch to you and saying, hey, this is how we do more than just use you for educational purpose. I mean, for entertainment purposes, we need mm -hmm. to be an educator. If you can get everybody out here to register to vote, or you can get people to show up 
for the hunger or show up for the houseless community, then we need to go ahead and figure out how to make you a community liaison. And in one of my videos, it says about community partnerships that they shouldn't be volunteer positions because as somebody that has worked in accounting, when I see the time of energy, um, effort and work that is put on volunteers when they're volunteering for the city to represent the communities that are marginalized and disadvantaged, they're sitting there working with people that are getting paid a lot of money. Right. And it's a hardship even to sit there and to be there. And it's a hardship to be intimidated in a process that's not really even meant to include you, but feels like it's a mandate that they have you be there. Mm -hmm. um, and again, a, a lot of that goes into the biases of our leaders. And I'm not saying that they're not competent, but they're not competent to lead us out of what we're existing in right now. And no matter if it's a, a pandemic, which, you know, this is a crisis. Um, but it's a crisis that in our lives, in a lot of people's lives, it existed before COVID-19. Um, and in order for us not to go back to business as usual, we have to have somebody that has had that experience and can understand what our community will need in order to get ourselves, ourselves on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yes, what's going on with you, Danny? Um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, I guess like, for me, um, I, I'll be asking Chris too. As a like <laughs> as a musician, I'm all, like I'm always like you, that's that's my craft. So I'm always very focused on like what and and like now everything that's going on, you know, with the pandemic, um, we're talking about like we're talking about income and we're talking about uh, keeping artists in the conversation and like uh, I think there was a there was a music uh, forum a couple weeks ago and something that's been on my mind is like how, what is the city going to do and how like what are we going to do for venues because like let's just say after this like their venues are no longer or like or the the gathering of people or music is not a thing then you have you have creatives out of work from March until we don't know like everything so, like that's such a scary thought and uh, it's just been on my mind of like what the f what the future of of music music arts. and music venue the arts are and like how you know how we can like what is that what does that do i don't know how many musicians or creatives there are in the city alone i don't know the number but yeah, like moving forward, it's a big community. It's gonna, it's a big community, and we're all gonna be out of work for a while. So, like, I don't know how the how the city is going to like aid us in that way. Um, yeah, the city, and and in my opinion, I looked at what leaders were doing across the country, and like people like Keisha Bottoms in Atlanta called on people like Tyler Perry. You know, they called on some of the very, very, very rich people. Um, that actually have businesses or live in their cities so that they could respond to artists. So you had artists that were at one level literally coming into the response for another uh, group of artists. And I've seen some of that here in Portland where the artists are creating their own mutual aid, but that is not sustainable. And I think again, when we talk about industry and we talk about how we need to build the stimulus to be a provision of a safety net that already should have been there. Like I remember eight years ago, um, sitting down with people that were, you know, like, like treasures in our community and talking to them about how they were going to keep their homes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, I just saw you on KTU. How are you worried about paying your mortgage? So it didn't just happen again because of COVID. We've never really had a sustainable safety net for artists in this city. And we've depended on art in this city. We're known for the art in this city. And so again, instead of being in a situation where our city um, lends its support as an exploitation of the art, we need to give ownership in the city. And to me, ownership is always education. Ownership is an investment. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I told people in the cannabis community is that we need to build a coalition of all the small businesses that make up our grassroots communities because since they have so much, that's how we're going to go ahead and start building into our economic base because there's so many that don't have enough and we're spending too much money on law enforcement. 
when I first started connecting with venues and especially musical venues here in Portland, it was because of the interaction with the fire marshal or the OLCC or law enforcement. There's always been this issue with, uh, let's say it, black artists and performing in Portland. Um, you had vendors saying that they couldn't play more than three or four songs or they would be shut down that would move up here from California and other places and realize they didn't even have that scene. So there's a lot of reconstruction. I wouldn't say building safety nets as much as I would say we need to reconstruct and develop policy that fairly takes care of all artists. Because what I did see was that we had systems and we did investment for artists that were paying lots of money to go to our arts colleges, but we displaced artists that were actually investing their art in our city. You got people like Isaka Samsudin who has art all over the place. And when I saw Isaka, he was still trying to figure out who could support him in building out his legacy project for Calendar. Are you kidding me? Your work is in the convention center. It's in the governor's office. It's in the city of Portland. It's in colleges. It's on walls. How are you not able to take care of yourself? So that's a first. But we have, and that's why I said my leadership will only be impacted by your engagement. You know, that's how people get things done. And that's why I don't believe in gatekeeping because a lot of leaders depend on a group. They don't depend on the city. And that's why we leave people out. Mm -hmm. Well, it is very important to me. Um, and I, like I said, like I'm very music folk, like I'm very music focused, but I would love to be a part of the political conversation so that I can learn and share and share and share the experiences of a working musician because yeah. it's very, very important to me. And be intentional about what you ask for, just like how I'm challenging you. We have Tuesday. On Tuesday, there's going to be an election that happens and there's going to be a winner on it. And you already have my commitment to change. What does that look like for us? How do we go forward with that? It's not going to be rocket science. I love development. You know, I'm like, ask anybody, give me something to work on. Um, and it's still not going to be enough, but let's do it together because we can. Let's do it. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, let's do it. Is Chris still in there? <laughs> Is Chris still in there? We get to talk to him. Oh, Charlie, Charlie. Oh, Charlie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was thinking, Chris. Come on, Chris, get on over here, Christopher. <laughs> Where did I get Chris from? <laughs> Looking like a Chris today. Right. I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh -oh. No, I, I'm, I love it. I'm excited, I'm excited for you, for, you, for your campaign, for your run. Thank you, thank really you so excited. much. Thank you for lending your support. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. Yes, I'm very curious to know what's important to you, what's happening in your life. What do you think we... Yeah, uh, a lot similar to Danny um, in terms of like, you know, and uh, what this looks like for us, for artists, what this looks like on not even just music, for artists in general, uh, creatives of all sorts, you know, when this opens back up and people go back to work and back to their jobs, what does that look like for artists and going and playing back in venues? Because there's not going to be gigs and stuff for a while. No, so it's... Uh, it's figuring out different avenues and things that we need to figure out to stay, you know, stay afloat, stay, stay, stay manageable and, and stay working, stay productive, stay efficient, you know? Uh, so that, that's kind of, I guess, my biggest thing is just wondering what it's going to look like, you know, when, 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 when it's time to open back up for, for people who work in a creative facet, you know? I'm very interested in backing the Congress bill for the $2,000 a month stimulus. When this first happened, we were the only campaign that suggested that the city uh, mandate that anybody making under 75,000 get at least $1,200 a month because we didn't know how long it was gonna last. Yeah. But the intention was to change that to a monthly $2,000 a month stipend so that we could figure things out as we go along without the debt piling up. Because I know that there's landlords, I know that there's venues that are wondering how do we continue paying all of our bills and managing all of this employment flow and everything else, and then still focusing on reopening. Mm -hmm. But what I'm looking at for artists um, outside of just you know staying together and demanding a stimulus package from the current administration, making sure that our governor is backing up everybody in Congress that's fighting for it, um, the long term is making a sustainable package happen here in Portland 
um, that is focused directly on what we would call politically marginalized groups that are also musicians because we've been on the chopping block in every process I see us being exploited for our labor. I see us being under identified as someone that should be getting really good um, substantial funding. I don't see a really big investment in our projects. And when we th talk about uh, the redevelopment of Portland post COVID, I'm, I'm wanting to work on some of the efficiencies we have now where a lot of centers are closed, where there's not a whole lot of traffic, where we're opening up green spaces and things like that. And I believe that artists are gonna be a part of that development because that's what we're gonna be reliant on in order to still make this a global focused city for tourism and for business mm -hmm. and everything else in order to keep and uh, elevate the infrastructure in an economically sound way, you have to make it a healthy space. And I don't know if people realize how important it is to have art in those spaces to make it healthy. If yeah. we have open cities of community, we need to have art. And if we're opening this summer, the city should already be trying to build contracts with those artists, um, not only because there's gonna be a mandate for building social paradigms that make us feel better because some of it should be focused on our physical and mental health, um, but also because it will and it will generate some of the economic drive that artists are missing right now because they are losing this opportunity with venues. And it could also bring in that opportunity. I'm looking at all these big empty spaces, just like the ones I have, and thinking about how do we transmit programs like this in those spaces and how do we get big companies to pay the cost like they do when they're advertising on television in other areas. So um, it's just gonna be a lot of development of new policy and I'm, I love doing that. And I used to do artist development back in the day with a CPA and so. That is needed, it's, it's really needed. Yeah. Outside of this space, I do that in my advocacy. So I hope that you, Danny and Blossom take yeah. me up on some of that after I'll take a break from this so that we can yeah. build a long term. What, what are some, what are some things during COVID that you feel like artists can do to, uh, you know, through, through supporting you and stuff that artists can do to, I don't know, to figure out. Right now, I'm trying to get us a strong leader in the city of Portland that doesn't mind connecting with community in order to get things done. And the last day to vote is on Tuesday. So mm -hmm. artists like yourselves, um, share this video when we're done. Talk to people about getting their votes in. And let's get Ted out of my seat, please. Yeah, like, let's get him out of here. Let's get him out of Portland that we're tired. We're, we're not going to continue to struggle. And we don't need to be lied to. Yeah. Like, we're invested in this city. All of us are. And we could get a better return on that. So it's time. No, I feel Hey, okay. now. Help me get elected. It's That's a pleasure to I'm meet you, very virtually, but it's a pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you, Donnie. Thank you. And I'm sorry for calling you Chris. Oh, you're fine. I kind of like Chris. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I know. I'm like, I'm trying to give him space. Yes, you're beautiful. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Would you, would you like to end with, oh, I'm sorry. Did I interrupt you? Oh, no, I was just saying I'm thankful. Your posse, everybody is just so magical and happy. And thank, thank you. Thank you. I, I got very lucky that we all went on a trip right before quarantine. And then we all decided, well, I live with Danny, but like Charlie, um, we all decided like, let's stay together so that we can continue to like grow our community that we have over here of just like very like-minded people that want to like, move in a forward motion, um, you know, not lingering on the past, you know, just enough to learn from it and like keeping it going. So we've been doing like a, a lot of creating, a lot of talking um, and like really like- We've been bonding. We have been yeah, bonding. I'm, every, everyone's been bonding. <laughs> Everyone has been bonding, but we've like, I'm telling you like, even like the arguments, all the things, like we are really getting to like, learn and like love each other for every single thing that we have to offer and not offer. Um, and even in the community, it's been really cool seeing all the people that are exchanging goods. Like, uh, you know, like if you have an apple tree and I got a grape, <laughs> you know like i'll bring you apples tomorrow you bring me grapes um we've been working with a local um farm called sanctuary farms i'm gonna shout shout it out because um they're amazing and um 
I've been, I started doing deliveries every Sunday for them. And I, it's like the most organic um, rush of like positivity I've ever felt. Everyone that I've, you know, delivered to is amazing. And everyone that I've met um, on the days of delivery, when they're going to go do the delivery, it's just like a joy of being like, ah, I have purpose. I'm doing things. And it's just been really cool to see <laughs> creatives find another way to be creative. Um, exactly. You know, not just singers. Like we got people like building things for other people people and you know writing things or doing new things it's just it, it the fact that anybody can do anything positively right now yes. is monumental and I like hope anybody paying attention like clap yourself on the back and if you're doing nothing clap yourself on the back as well because you're yeah. probably doing a lot of something and you probably really need to rest right now so like please rest 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 I tell I'm telling myself that I'm telling you that rest yes. <laughs> that is it oh yeah yeah okay. thank you so much blossom would you like to um end with uh with another song yeah um yeah you know what i actually want to do oh, I'm so to be here down. danny oh she's close no. not you baby <laughs> <laughs> um let's do eight no sunshine okay i'm just gonna remind everyone to uh, make sure to tell your friends and your neighbors and your family and everyone to get your ballots in and to vote for Teresa Rayford for mayor. Yes, yes please. Vote, vote, vote. I can't even tell you to like vote directly without giving my whole school, but I will say learn, educate yourself so that you feel comfortable and content voting for this wonderful person um, and ask questions if you don't feel comfortable um, because as she said, she's an open book and she's here for you. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, and then stay on after you finish your song. Okay. 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 All right. Bye everybody. Where is it? I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> sunshine or she's gone only darkness every day ain't no sunshine or she's gone and she's always gone too long anytime she goes away I wonder this time where she's gone I wonder if she's gonna stay Cause there ain't no sunshine when she's gone Time just ain't no Anytime she goes away And I know, 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 I know. Hey, you wanna leave young thing alone? Cause ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. darkness every day ain't no sunshine when she's gone and she's always gone too long anytime she goes away
one more time, Charlie. Go ahead. Sunshine on Chico, mm -hmm. only darkness every day. I love that harmony. Ain't no sunshine on Chico. So I got alone inside. She goes away. This time where she's gone I wonder if she's gone to stay hey, hey. sunshine when she's gone and she's always gone too long anytime she goes away and I know I know I know I know